welcome back to another episode of The True Osprey. So today, 10 fans give 10 questions to former Osprey, Philo Tietia. So he has answered the questions and you'll be hearing from him, the man himself, very soon. Um, so much uh, appreciated that. Thank you, Philo, for that. So this Saturday, the Osprey welcome Emerson Lions of South Africa to the Swansea Dock Com Stadium, kickoff 7.35, I'll be there. My match day preview of round two, or was it one then? Round two of the URC will be out on Monday. So don't forget to subscribe. Over to you, Philo. Hey, Darren. Thanks for uh, your questions. And um, I'll try and answer them as best I can. <laughs> Just got to put my glasses on. Uh, first question. Will he ever return to coach us? Good question. I think um, uh, Swansea is a, a special place for, for our family. And uh, we had three beautiful children uh, born there. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a special place. Uh, we spent five years there and um, a lot of good connections and friends uh, still currently live there. So um, yeah, it would, it would definitely be an opportunity uh, that came up. And I think, yeah, the stars need to align and, and time is really important. Second question, uh, who did you see as the greatest threat to his place on the team? He was always the first name on there, but I'm interested to know who he rated. Um, I think um, the competition for spots are, are really important and uh, all the players that competed for the number eight jersey or the number six jersey uh, that I competed for, um, even lock towards the back end of my career there, uh, really important because the players next to me, uh, we built trust, uh, but also uh, we competed, uh, really competed uh, to try and get named uh, to represent the Osprey. So that was important. So players like um, uh, Lee Beach, uh, Andy Lloyd, Jonathan Thomas, uh, JT, uh, Jughead, uh, Ryan Jones, and even the late, uh, bless his soul, uh, JC, Jerry Collins. Um, yeah, good men and uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic men and, and really uh, pushed ourselves and really competed uh, and really tried to get the best out of each other. Yeah, good question. Uh, third one. Third question, does he regret leaving 99 caps and not getting his 100? No, no, I don't have any regrets. And um, I guess it sort of depends on the lens you look at it and um, and where you look it from. So um, 99 opportunities to play for the Ospreys and put 99 times to put the jersey on and really uh, compete against the best teams in Europe. Um, what a great opportunity. And uh, when I look at it and reflect on uh, 99 times, yeah, 99 is a pretty perfect number. So I'm um, no, really grateful. Uh, question four, what game stands out that you play for the Ospreys? A lot of good games, a lot of fond memories for the Ospreys. Um, but one game stands out in particular uh, is when we took a young, young team out to, to Ulster, and um, yeah, all our Welsh internationals and uh, Scottish and Irish uh, weren't available, and um, yeah, we we fought fought hard, a uh, really gritty game of performance uh, from a young young players and it was awesome watching and witnessing just their growth in the moment and and hanging tough and it was a lot of character. Um, uh, that's one game that really stands out um, out of all of the games. Uh, just seeing the growth of the young guys and, and really just um, taking control of the moment and staying in the fight. So it was really impressive. Um, what was your nickname at the Ospreys and why? Um, my nickname was Bulls, and um, but uh, I inherited a couple of names in Wales, 
Uh, the first one didn't really stick. Uh, they tried to call me Granddaddy. We had Barry Williams, uh, the Welsh and British Lion International, and his nickname was Daddy. Um, but actually, there was a couple of names uh, that the locals gave me. And um, they called me Alright Tia or Alright Phil. Um, so it was quite um, um, quite amusing when my uh, children could hear it and they would just walk away and, and, uh, and smile. So, um, yeah, a couple of those names uh, from the locals. Who was the toughest opponent you have played against? A lot of, lot of tough opponents, um, but probably just look at it more as a, as a team. Um, and Ford Pack, uh, the Pack's um, mentality, um, we played against some good Ford Packs. So a couple that come to mind are the Leicester, Leicester Tigers. Um, we had some good scraps against those guys. Uh, good tough team and um, really respected the way they played um, and they just didn't give an inch. Uh, set piece wise, outstanding. Uh, so, but that's to say most teams and well, all the teams in, in Europe. Um, that was one of Leicester, yeah, definitely Munster. Uh, the Irish teams, Munster and Ulster, a lot of respect for those two teams. Um, yeah, so they have really good battles uh, against Munster and Ulster and um, yeah, really enjoyed them. Uh, they definitely got the best out of you um, playing against those two teams. And then um, uh, French teams, but Stade Francais in my time there, they were, they were good to play against. They were um, yeah, strong uh, set piece wise, but also they had razzle, uh, they could play. And um, Local derby games, really, really special, playing against the Scarlets, uh, tough team uh, just across the ditch. Uh, then Cardiff, Cardiff Blues, always a tough pack to play against. And then um, up in the capital and then the Gwent uh, Dragons. And I say this respectfully, probably didn't have all the, uh, the talent, but geez, they had a lot of character and grit and fought for everything. And a lot of respect for for that team, um, and probably didn't have uh, the money uh, to try and get the best players that they could. But geez, they did a great job with uh, harnessing group, and they really fought. Um, yeah, so re really admirable, and um, probably not admirable, but a lot of respect for for that team in particular. Question seven, is there anything you do and don't miss about playing or don't miss, no, I don't miss playing. No, yeah, boots are definitely hung up. Um, I'll get out there and uh, make numbers if we're short of training, particularly if we're overseas. And, um, but yeah, no, I don't miss uh, playing at all. <laughs> uh, last two questions, who was your inspiration growing up? Um, my parents uh, definitely inspiration um, yeah, and everything I did really um, and we go to from the islands from Samoa to New Zealand and Aotearoa um, English was their second language um, and really made it work I uh, had children and he yeah, did a great job so really inspirational um, yeah fantastic last question do you still follow the Ospreys in your spare time? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I follow the Ospreys uh, fondly and um, still got a lot of uh, good mates uh, that play. Uh, Gwyn Togs, Alan jones um, fantastic leader. Great to see um, Gwyn Togs really lead by example, but also sharing knowledge and, and um, growing uh, others around them. So it's been fantastic watching um, when dogs play. Uh, Tippy, um, Justin Tiprick, a fantastic young player to, to, to play with when he was coming through and um, a lot of time for Tippy and uh, it's great that he's recovered from his injury and, and back playing and, and leading the way uh, for the Ospreys. Um, fantastic young man, um, still goes back 
gives back to Drabonis's club. Uh, so it's, he's always been that way uh, since I've known him and coached him at um, at the Ospreys uh, academy level. So um, keep it up, Tippy. You're doing awesome, mate. Uh, and then there's um, young Webby. Uh, it's good to see Webby uh, back in back there and. And um, and also Borders, uh, my man that's come back from Harlequins, and uh, it's good to see that he's back in the mix at the Ospreys and leading the way there. Um, Darren, just want to say thank you, uh, Diok, and um, thanks for the opportunity to share some questions, but also uh, shed some light on, on on those questions and with my answers. All right, thank you. Bye, bye.